Not all surface measurements are about texture. Sometimes we will look for things like wear scars. This is a great example. This surface has a worn area, and we can see that quite clearly through the image overlay that this particular measuring instrument provides. So let's dive into wear analysis a little deeper. In a past video, we looked at the tool called Profile Wear Analysis. And in this tool, we could choose a profile along a scar and highlight that zone and fit a geometry around it. Or in this case, let's fit an arc, and that fits through the region outside the selection. We select a zone, and the arc is applied around that zone. But let's do better. Let's look at the tool called wear analysis. And in this tool, we're going to look at this wear scar through a three-dimensional set of eyes. We're going to select the zone, just like in the 2D tool, and we're going to fit a geometry around it. But this can be a little difficult sometimes because our coloring blurs when we have a wear scar that is close to the regions around it in terms of height. So let's use the palette tool and adjust the color positions to find that wear scar. There it is. Now we can find it quite clearly and we can adjust accordingly. The region adjusting tool is like the, the ones you find in many other software packages. We can drag a zone around, we can right click and add points, or we can right click and delete points. So this region selection should be quite familiar and comfortable. Any time in OmniSurf 3D you don't like something, we can double click it. So if we make a mess with the region selector, a double click brings it back home so we can find things. Now for this demo, we'll just use a coarse uh, selection here. I'll kind of bring in the wear zone somewhere around that scar, and we'll click Compute. When we click Compute, we will see that reference geometry fitted through the original surface when we're on the reference geometry view. Now this is a great place to start because it shows me that my plane selection doesn't really apply in this case. So I'm going to switch to a sphere and recompute, and now we can see that blue transparent reference surface fits through the data quite nicely. And even if I zoom in, I can see that reference surface bulging through the worn scar. So this is quite good. And as always, a double click resets. So even if I zoom here and double click, it will reset. Let's switch views though. Let's switch over to the wear surface view. And now I can see the leveled geometry, the leveled sphere, and the surface relative to that. And also, the palette tool might help me see this a little bit better. In fact, we can see that during the wear process, material was moved around the edges, and there's a bit of a raised area relative to that spherical reference. This could be interesting depending on your, your application. This view also points out something interesting to me. Many people are interested in wear depth. If we look at just a simple wear depth, the depth of 8.7 micrometers is based on the deepest point, which may not be the wear scar from the primary mechanism. This may be something to do with porosity or perhaps a scratch. So depth alone may not be as powerful or reliable as a volume. So OmniSurf 3D is reporting a wear volume here, and this can be in micrometers or millimeters. So cubic microns, cubic millimeters, depending on the scale of your wear, both are available. But we also can explore this surface in a little more depth. We could turn on or off the reference plane. When we fitted the sphere, that became a zero plane in this view. We can also gray out the reference area and see how our zone looks. This might help us say, let's tune that zone a little bit. I'm going to stretch the top out a little bit here on the left. And if I recompute, the top stretches out here. If I drag the area perhaps out of position, we can see immediately on the right-hand side that it's in the wrong place. So this ability to adjust on the level data might be helpful to you. We can go back to the normal view, and we can even hide the reference surface if we need to. Now, in many of our tools in OmniSurf 3D, we want to perform some modification to the data and end up with a new surface. This new surface can be saved. In fact, I can put some identification on it um, and call it the wear surface. 
and save this wear surface. I can also analyze the wear surface. This is a case of bringing this new modified surface back onto the main screen for other surface analysis tools. So let's do that. Let's analyze the wear surface and we will see that this surface goes back to our main screen for a new analysis. Now since the wear analysis provided leveling for us, I don't want to do any more geometry or form. Let's say if I chose a plane right now, the fitted plane, if I go to preprocess plus geometry, the fitted plane is hanging below this reference surface. It's sitting down inside the wear scar because it's establishing a new plane on the full data set. I don't want that because I've established a reference on the wear tool. So when I do any subsequent processing of a wear surface, I want my geometry to be none. So no geometry on the main screen. Now I can proceed with form removed, not making any changes. I can do primary and filtered just like any other analysis of a surface topography. So the wear tool in OmniSurf 3D is incredibly powerful, and I might even say it's a little bit fun. It's interesting to interact and play with the curves and, and see how well we can isolate that wear shape. So as you can tell, we love playing with surfaces, and we'd love to help you understand yours better. So if you have questions about wear or questions about surface texture in general, reach out to us at digitalmetrology.com. You can take this data for a spin yourself. Uh, you'll find it in the Surface Library at digitalmetrology.com.